you have questions, we have answers. This is Jane Muller. And this is Ken Muller. Welcome to our show, all about real estate with Ken and Jane. Today, Jane, we're going to talk about the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, better known as the NJEDA. The NJEDA is the state of New Jersey's principal agency for driving economic growth, and it provides both loans and grants to eligible businesses for real estate and capital improvement projects. Um, we have with us um, representatives as our, as our special guests today, Sarin Parikh and Kathy Guzman, both of the NJEDA. Guys, welcome to our show. Thank welcome. you. It's good Happy. to be here. All right. We're excited. There's so much to unravel. You guys have a lot of programs, a lot of goodies to give out, both in uh, loans and um, grants. So please give us your roles. Your briefly give us your roles with NJEDA, and then we can get into the different programs that are available. Sure. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. So hello, everyone. My name is Soren Parikh. I'm a senior business development officer here with the NJEA, uh, New Jersey Economic Development Authority, and I service the central Jersey region. Um, my area of specialty is providing traditional financing to uh, businesses. And I've been with the organization for a little over three and a half years. I started uh, with NJEDA as a underwriter and almost a year into my new role on the development side, I'm now promoting and marketing the products I used to underwrite. So it's pretty neat to see both ends of the spectrum. Okay, very cool. And uh, Kathy, how about you? Thanks for having me today. I'm very excited to be here. So my role within the NJEDA is as a small business liaison. And what that means is my job is to share information about grant programs. So I crisscross central New Jersey. I'm so happy to be here today. So it's a great opportunity to share information. I meet with chambers of commerce. Sometimes I'll go and um, walk in a downtown business district and go in and talk to businesses. Um, we work with the small business development centers. We work with business improvement districts. Anybody that can help us get the information out about these programs are the people that we partner with. Um, prior to joining the NJEDA, which was earlier this year, I've only been there about six months, uh, I had my own small business for several years, and my clients were small businesses, so I know a lot about small businesses. I also worked with the Business Improvement District in the borough of Flemington, and I'm also the daughter of a small business owner. My father started several small business owners throughout my lifetime, so I have lived small businesses, and I love small businesses, and that's why I really am happy to be in this position, spreading information and sharing news about grants. So everybody's always happy to see me and meet me because I've got good news. That's right. You've got the goodies, the real goodies, right? And, and I think, I don't know what the stat is, but I, the majority of New Jersey as mo as the country is made up of small businesses, right? They're the they're the bones of the of society. So they're the bread and butter that, that drive our economy, right? It's all the small businesses that, you know, whether it be the retail stores, the the uh, handymen, the contractors, all, there's so many small businesses that we rely on and we it's important that we support them and Absolutely, recognize them. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so let's talk about the NJEDA, what the overview is of its mission statement in terms of grants and loan program. Then we'll talk, uh, we'll talk about the specific programs that we offer. In this show, we're going to talk focus more on the, on the loans. And then the second show we do next week, we're going to talk more about the grant program. Okay. So in general, you know, at the NJEDA, our main goal is to create jobs, right? Mm -hmm. And we do it in so many different ways, right? So New Jersey Economic Development Authority has been around since 1974, and we are in a lot of different sectors, from offshore wind, to clean energy, historical preservation, and as well as community development. And that's where we fall in. So we fall into the community development sector, where I specialize in the business banking team. And what we try to do is to create loans or to give out loans to businesses in the hopes that they can you know, grow and create jobs because it's more of a win-win as we provide low-cost financing to businesses. And as they grow, they need more employees. And as they have more employees, that's just it strengthens our economy by, our, by lowering the unemployment rate and increasing job growth. Mm -hmm. And you're funding from the state. You're basically, you're a funded organization from the state of New Jersey, right? So you're, you have a certain amount of funds allocated for, the, for your program, right? That, that's correct. So under our traditional financing, that is NJEDA's own homegrown money, right? So um, 
we use that for our traditional lending. And I know Kathy had mentioned, um, well, we'll be mentioning that I think uh, I think almost all the grants money are coming. It's more of appropriated funds. Is that correct. 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 Yeah. The grant money is an allocation. Um, we'll be talking about that a little bit later. But the the Main Street Recovery Re- Program was a hundred and fifty million dollar allocation in 2023, and there was just another fifty million allocated to that, and that is grant funding, principally grant funding for small businesses. Right. And for the listeners out there, th- these funds are available. <clears throat> and your mission, one of your roles is to spread the word that that these funding programs are out there for both loans and grants, because a lot of the listeners, a lot of the businesses that, that may be eligible are not aware of the of the this these resources. Absolutely, Ken. I mean, Ken, oh. you actually hit the head right on the nail on this one. And one of our you know, core visions here in our mission statement that we want to do here under the business banking in the, in the community development side is we really want to make business owners well aware of who NJEDA is, right? Because we want to provide options to businesses, right? And it goes much further than just going to a bank to get a loan or through a private lender. Here, we're, we represent the state. We can also provide financing. And we can, you know, as I'll go through a few of our programs, we have financing a whole different ways from direct lending to even partnering up with many, many banks throughout the state. So we want to let folks know, businesses know that, hey, the state is also here to help and we can also provide funding in addition to and partnering with banks as well as private lenders. Okay, great. So let's get to it now. Um, one of the programs that you have is small business funding up to $500,000. First, I guess the listeners would want to know is what constitutes a small business? You know, who's eligible to get it? Um, how much can they borrow? Is it, is it up? You know, how is that determined? Um, what can the funds be used for? So let's, you know, let's break it down and give an overview of how that how this program works. Absolutely. So under the Small Business Fund, that's a fund where we can lend up to $500,000. And some of the common denominators <clears throat> amongst the Small Business Fund, as well as our two other loan programs, is that we can fund for the purchase of real estate, equipment, and working capital. And anybody who's a small business is eligible. I believe we are pivoting off of the definition of SBA. Of definition of small business, which is about what anything less than 500 employees is uh, deemed a small business. Correct, Kathy? Yes, actually, it's it is the SBA definition of a small business, which varies by industry. It could be either revenue or number of employees, mm-hmm. and it actually goes from something called the North American Industry Classification Code. And every business has a classification code. Mm-hmm. So, small business owners out there, don't be intimidated by this stuff. That's what we're here for. If you don't know what your NAICS code is, if you don't know if you're a small business, come to us and we're happy to help you and look that up. Okay. So, and why don't you guys give your contact info? Because there might be a lot of people listening that are that have businesses that certainly could qualify and they're going to need, they're going to want to sure. reach out to you. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, you you, I'll, go, I'll, go, why don't you go first and I'll go okay. second. <laughs> um, yeah. My email is Kathy, K A T H Y dot Guzman, G U Z M A N at njeda.gov. And that's honestly the best way to get a hold of me because I'm crisscrossing the state of New Jersey, meeting with small business owners. I'm always out and about. Um, But I I do check my emails all the time and I'd be happy to get back to you and help. Okay, great. And then my contact information, it's it's, um, soren.parikh. So that's uh, soren, S as in Sam, A as in Apple, U as in Umbrella, R as in Robert, I as in India, N as in Nancy, dot parikh. P is in Paul, A is in Apple, R is in Robert, I is in India, K is in Kate, H is in Henry, at njeda.gov. And you can reach me also on my work number at, my work cell number, excuse me, at 609-414-3624. And just like Kathy, we do travel a lot, but we do our best to respond within about 24 hours, uh, whether it be emailing us or giving us a call on our cell phones, we'll definitely, uh, you know, get back to you as soon as possible. And it's great. You guys are reaching out to the chamber. That's where I I connected with Sarin at the uh, East Brunswick Regional Chamber of Commerce, uh, different meetings. And, you know, it, it's a useful source. I think one of your other colleagues gave a presentation overview for all the businesses that were there. So that's just a that's how I. That was very enlightening and uh, a great, a great idea to go to the, go where the businesses are, which are the chamber uh, meetings. I agree, and and and, and um, really, it you know going to chamber events and we're going to anything is critical, just because at the end of the day, we we really are focusing aggressively to let folks know that we're here and that we're here to help. 
Right. All right, great. So let's go back to the small business funding now, up to 500,000. So we, we have the definition, uh, the guidelines, they follow the for defining a small business. Um, so the business, the, what can the funds be uh, used for? For real estate that's going into a business they're buying or for capital improvements or for equipment or how? what are the guidelines that, that eligible uh, businesses can utilize the funds for? Sure. So in general, so here at NJEDA, we are a fixed asset lender. So what that means is that anytime we lend out money, we do need to have a fixed asset that needs to back it up. And fixed assets can be something such as uh, the commercial uh, building that you're, if you happen to own it, personal residence, investment properties. So something that's like, you know, um, you know, very fixed, such as such as well as equipment. So we can also do um, new equipment. We can look into old equipment. It would just have to, it's very circumstantial. And so we can, you know, fund for the purchase of real estate. So if an individual has identified, let's say, let's just, well, I'll give a good example. Let's just say an individual wants to, who is currently renting and and the landlord says, hey, I'm going to leave. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sell this building. Would you be interested in buying it? Because you're a good tenant and I, I would like to just offer it to you first before I op- offer it to the market. And then, you know, if if the price is right and everything like that, then, you know, they can, you know, if they agree, we can provide that kind of financing and we can use the building as our fixed asset collateral. We can also use equipment if they want to purchase equipment and we can utilize that fixed asset, which would be the equipment. Uh, in general, we are, um, like I said, a fixed asset lender as well as our loan to value ratio, so how much we are willing to lend out against the value of the property, we can go as high, well, our sweet spot is 90%. We can go a little higher, but it would have to be circumstantial. And we, we like I said, we do offer equipment financing. And our working capital, that's more of a one-time infusion. So let's say a business in a manufacturing you know space and has a product that they are going to launch, they need staff right on hand to handle the demand. So that one-time infusion is where NJEDA can provide that working capital. Here at NJEDA, we do not offer anything revolving, so we wouldn't do anything of a revolving line of credit or anything you know, um, you know, know, revolving in that aspect or anything operational, like operating capital. Um, we usually tell folks that, hey, you know, if you are interested in doing that, we highly encourage you to talk to your bank because they have a lot of different products and different types of things that they can offer to uh, small businesses that can offer things that focus more on revolving. Okay, great. Good stuff. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back after these messages. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We're joined with um, by uh, Sarin Parikh and um, Kathy Guzman of the NJEDA. So to continue, guys, our discussion with the small business funding up to $500,000, that's a direct loan from your organization uh, to the qualified business. That doesn't involve partnering with any, with any of your premier lenders, right? This program, they would apply directly uh, to you, Sarin? So that's, a, that's an excellent question, Ken. And the answer is... It, and this is why the small business fund is a very great product because it does have options. So yes, it, the answer to your question is yes to both. So under the small business fund, we can lend here at NJEDA directly to a small biz, to a, to any small business up to five hundred thousand dollars, and there are fees associated with it. And I can go in that in you know briefly, um, but we also. This program does also have the option to partner up with a bank. And if so, the fees are, well, we eliminate some of the fees and it's a little cheaper. So depending on, you know, if the applicant wants to get their bank involved, you know, we can definitely do that here under the small business fund. Or if they don't want to get them involved, we can absolutely fund directly through EDA. Okay, very good. I have a question. Go ahead, Jane. I yeah. have a question here. Yeah, you're supposed and, to have the answers. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 here's the expert. They have the answer. I'm just right. asking a question. If a small business, right, most likely when they started, they only lease, so they cannot uh, purchase as yet, right? So when they lease a property, as you said, you have a once, uh, one-time uh, uh, help with the uh, um, capital. 
So in that case, we really have no real estate or no equipment to back up. Or if they want to buy some uh, business but or set up business but have a used uh, uh, equipment, which you said is very limited as uh, security, right? So in that case, can they use their either home resident or the investment property to back up the loan? Is that an option? Again, great question. And the answer is yes. We can take any type of property, whether it be commercial or residential, as well as investment property. As you know, if somebody is purchasing equipment, mm -hmm. right, we can just use the equipment as the collateral. Mm -hmm. I want to touch on something uh, because you had mentioned about old or used equipment, right? So it would be circumstantial, right? And we would have to look into it. We would usually have to have the applicant pay an appraisal called the orderly liquidation value mm -hmm. to figure out how much the value of that old equipment's worth because, you know, we have to factor in depreciation. And then usually based off that, then it kind of can dictate, you know, how much the loan request can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But even they use the uh, um, the uh, resident or the investment property, even they have that as a backup, the security, you still have to have a valuation for that used uh, equipment to uh, evaluate it. Absolutely, absolutely. So for everything, we would need to just you know get an appraisal or anything like that just mm -hmm. to make sure that there is sufficient equity available to cover the loan request. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. And here's another variable, which I know, which I kind of know the answer to. Let's say you have a contractor, and let's say in my example, it was an electrician that's interested in buying a building that they partially want to occupy and partially want to rent out. They're, that's also another option that's available as long as they meet the, I think, 51% occupancy requirement, because we were working on that together, and we we're very close to striking a deal, so I'm, I'm still working with them. And so that's I got educated on that, which you, can you share that with the listeners? Absolutely. Yeah. So here at NJEDA, we are in uh, we are trying to help businesses grow, and I, I always joke by saying we don't we're here to help the businesses grow and not make the rich get richer. So to Ken's point, yes, we do look for the fact that the that it has to be an owner occupied uh, space. So what the, our definition of owner occupied is is that you know the owner of the building has to occupy at the very least fifty one percent, you know. While they could collect rent from tenants, um, that won't be a factor in our loan decision making for our underwriters. But if we start noticing that, say, <clears throat> the owner of the business has 20% and the remaining 80% is of other tenants and this owner is collecting you know, rental income, that is going to be deemed investment property, which is something that EDA will not engage not in. Not engage in, right. But there is still the possibility for the owner to take on a building that's a little bit bigger than their own particular needs as long as they occupy that 51% and then they can you know, rent out the, the remainder as long as, they, as long as it meets the 51% uh, minimum threshold. It, it yes. is yeah. makes sense because this government uh, uh, yeah. program is to support small business, right? It's right. not, as you said, it's not for the other people to take advantage and make money on that, right? right? I mean, but, I understand some smaller business, you should purchase something a little bit bigger than you use. Why? Because you have to leave the space for grow. If you if, if you need 20,000, you yeah. buy 20,000. And tomorrow you need the 25 and 30. It's very expensive to move again. So I, I, I think the government is very good to take consideration of that for the small business, right? I mean, allow them to go a little bit bigger. So in anticipating the future growth and uh, the growth helped the economy, helped the employment. It's all good, right? Absolutely, yeah. Gene. I mean, you, you absolutely, absolutely hit the head around the nail on that one, too. And exactly. And, and who we are is that we are here to help small businesses grow and sustain. Now, for those who, you know, like I said, we want to make the rich get richer, we highly encourage them, go talk to your bank. Yeah, you know, and that's sure. where you have the that's bank what the banks are. You guys bank are the specialty four. programs. Yeah. Um, so we hit up on the small business funding up to 500000 Let's talk about this other program, the direct loan funding up to $2 million for eligible businesses. So the first question would be, what's an eligible business to get up to $2 million? Yeah, so we so under all programs, so the premier lender, the the premier lender loan, which is partnering up with banks, our direct loan as well as our small business fund, they are all kind of operating the same way, right? So it's all small businesses, okay. right? Anything based on what Kathy was saying, you know, um, off SBA definition, nothing more than five hundred employees, and anybody can be qualified. You know, obviously, just like any lending institution, we're no different. You're more than welcome to look into it. You know, our team will 
you know, we'll work with you to see if you, you know, um, have all the right documents. And, you know, our underwriters will, you know, will will analyze your financial statements just like any other lender would to see if you qualify based off, off your loan amount and your your profitability of the business against all your annual debt, similar to what a lot of other lending institutions will do. But yeah, under the direct loan, you know, it can go up to $2 million. Okay. And when you say direct loan, that would be funding directly from NJEDA without the involvement of a, of a partner uh, lender, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So this would be straight from NJEDA. Right. Yeah. Is there any other product that you think uh, the listener would be interested? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, one of the products I think is also very good is our is our premier lender program. And that also is funding up to $2 million. And why that's a very good program is because we can involve banks, right? We can partner up with banks. And here at NJEDA, we deal with so many different banks, right? Over two dozen you know, banks such as, you know, your, you know, you know, like your Bank of America, Wells Fargo, to even your mid-tier banks, like your, like your M&T Bank, you know, and your TD Bank. And what we can do, right, is we can partner up with them, you know, and um, they can provide a loan. So, you know, how that's possible? Well, we, you know, there's so many different ways, and I'll give you a really good example. Let's just say an owner of a business goes to a bank and they're saying, hey, I'm interested in getting a loan you know, say for $1.2 million, right? Going to buy the building where I'm currently leasing from. You know, the banker will be like, okay, fine. Give us everything you need. You know, give us everything we're asking for, like your financials and, and everything like that. We'll send it to our underwriting team and let them analyze it. They come back and they say, hey, unfortunately, we can write you a loan, but only for $600,000. So there's that gap of $600,000. So the question is, well, what is that applicant going to do? You know, he, you know, he or she may or may not have that kind of money laying around. Or if they do, it doesn't make business sense, who knows, to go ahead and use it. You know, maybe under the advice of their CPA or financial planner, they're saying, no, don't burn through your cash. So where are they going to go? How are they going to secure that secondary financing? And the answer is they can, you know, they, they can come to EDA. We can work with that bank. We can follow everything exactly the exact terms to the bank. Our difference will be the interest rate because we will pivot off the, you know, the five, the, the five-year treasury, seven-year treasury, or the ten-year treasury rate. We can, you know, we would add, you know, uh, points to it, kind of like pricing for the risk, up to 250 basis points. So, in general, we do we do come, you know. Um, we do, we do tend to come a little lower than the bank in terms of interest rate, which is what the banks would want because then they can combine their portion with our portion and create a blended rate. And we can cover that gap and we can provide that loan to the business. Okay. Here's a question for you, though. What about the security interest? Because obviously the bank, the, the premier lender is going to have the first mortgage on the property. So is NJEDA comfortable being in the second position? Because you're basically, let's say the, the building is worth $1.5 million. They go to bank, they go to bank A, get 600000 but they need another 600000 to get their $1.2 million in financing. They come to you. You say, okay, they're approved. So how do you guys, your $600,000 is is, would definitely be in second place position to the to Bank A that that's always going to be in the first uh, lien on the property, but I guess you guys are aware and co- their EJ is willing to take that uh, risk, or do they require other collateral? Do they look further into the le- into the borrower's um, other finances and other equity to try to claim a stake somewhere else on it? That's more of an underwriting, but I know you have underwriting experience and you can answer. <laughs> yeah, actually, Ken, actually, Ken, that is actually probably one of the most popular questions that we get from a lot of bankers as well as businesses. And the answer is, given who we are, we will, you know, if we are partnering up with a bank, we will always, always, always be subordinate in position. Now, that will always be tried and true for any direct lending from us. We do have guarantee products, but that protects the bank. And when if we're offering a guarantee, whether it be a line of credit guarantee or a line of, or a guarantee on a term loan, that will be peri pursue or equal footing. Uh, peri pursu is in Latin for equal footing. But when but in general, we are lending money directly um, with a partnership with a bank, we will always, always, always be subordinate and collateral. That's because they want to support the, the uh, course, small business. Uh, yeah. The bank will give them the loan. 
<clears throat> yeah, so that's Absolutely. why they do it. Well, we're almost out of time. Guys, please give your contact information once again, and thank you so much for being our guest. So we're going to have you back next week to talk about the grant program. Yeah, so thank you very much, you know, Ken and Jane. It was, it was uh, amazing and a, and a great pleasure to, for us to be here. Again, my name is Soren Parikh. I'm a senior business development officer here with the NJEDA. And you can reach me at soren.parikh at njeda.gov. That's S and Sam, A is an Apple, U an Umbrella, R is in Robert, I is in India, N is in Nancy, dot Parikh, P is in Paul, A is in Apple, R is in Robert, I is in India, K is in Kite, H is in Henry at njeda.gov. And you can reach me at 609-414-3624. Thank you, Soren. Kathy? And ahead. Kathy Guzman. I'm a senior a small business liaison, and my contact is Kathy, K A T H Y dot Guzman at njeda dot gov. And my phone is 609 931 1378. And if you don't have a pen handy at the moment, you could always email small business services and ask to ask for Soren or Parikh, and, and they'll, get, they'll get the information to us. All right, guys, thank you again. Once again, it was our great pleasure to have you both. We're out of time. We'll see everyone next week. Have a great rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.